1974, the Watergate crisis was rocking America, Neil Young was rocking Canada, a natural gas pipeline was being built from Alberta to southern Ontario, and almost nobody had heard about the Alberta tar sands. A lot has changed in the last 40 years. Climate change has become the greatest threat to life on Earth. The tar sands have expanded to the point they can be seen from space, and industry has plans to triple production. A higher rate of rare cancer has been found in downstream First Nations, millions of hectares of old growth forest and billions of liters of fresh water have already been destroyed. Now there is a desperate push to export tar sands oil. The biggest proposal of them all is TransCanada's Energy East pipeline, which would see over 1 million barrels of tar sands oil per day pumped to export terminals in Quebec and Atlantic Canada. Energy East would drive climate pollution up when we all know it needs to go down. Filling the Energy East pipeline would allow a 40% increase in tar sands production. That is like doubling the number of cars in Ontario or restarting all the dirty old coal plants that took 15 years to close down. We can have a livable planet or tar sands expansion, not both. Energy East would carry diluted bitumen or dilbit created by diluting the thick goopy bitumen from the tar sands with various toxic and explosive chemicals to make it thin enough to squeeze down a pipeline. Massive pipeline ruptures in Mayflower, Arkansas in 2012 and Kalamazoo, Michigan in 2010 show how impossible it is to clean up Dilbit because it sinks in water and sticks to everything it touches. The Kalamazoo cleanup is entering its fifth year and has already cost more than a billion dollars. That pipeline leaked 4 million litres over 14 hours before it was eventually shut off. Energy East would pump that much oil in 35 minutes. TransCanada only plans to build a new pipeline for part of the Energy East project. To save money, they plan to repurpose an up to 40-year-old natural gas pipeline to carry the Dilbit between Alberta and Ontario. When that pipeline was built starting in 1974, thinner steel was used in remote areas because it was cheaper, and the consequences of a gas leak were considered much less serious than an oil leak. But not only is a rupture more likely in remote areas where the pipe is thinner, it could take a lot longer before the spill is noticed and the pumping is stopped. Industry brags that they have state-of-the-art technology for detecting leaks, but 80% of all the pipeline spills in the last three years were discovered by people before the pipeline companies even suspected they had a problem, including the spill in Kalamazoo, including the spill in Mayflower. In the last audit of their key safety management systems, TransCanada was found to be non-compliant in four out of nine categories. In their sales pitch to the Obama administration, TransCanada claimed their Keystone XL pipeline would create 20,000 jobs, but the U.S. State Department estimates the real figure to be as low as just 50 long-term jobs. Investing in the green economy generates seven times as many jobs as projects like Energy East, while ensuring that future generations will still have a planet worth living on. We don't need to expand the tar sands. We don't need to export more oil. We don't need Energy East.